airborne ranger military career for a shot at glory on Wall Street. I thought it would be an amazing, fun, cool job. Work hard, get paid, dress up in a really nice suit, and stay the hell out of the rain. After a week into training for the role, reality set in, and I felt I'd made one of the biggest mistakes of my life. I'd been, dis- I'd been dismissive of what I was getting into. This job was 100% sales, lone wolf, cold calling, build a book of trading accounts, zero guarantees of anything, don't produce and you're gone. I'm hopeful that as real estate agents, you can relate. Your success is entirely self-determined and reliant upon your ability to make deals happen. In my situation, I kept asking myself, what have I done? I have zero skills and experience selling, and this role leveraged none of my best abilities in inspiring others to action and working closely with others on a team to accomplish great things. I felt really stupid, scared of many things. The biggest was failure, being broken by the situation after being an elite professional, and I mean hardcore military operative and a valued member of a unit. I carried so much regret and anxiety into that job. What it takes to get through tough times is resilience, part mindset, part feelings, part behavior, aligned around overcoming whatever obstacles are in your way. After West Point, after all the hardcore physical training and assignments, this was one of the most challenging times in my life. A major source of depression in veterans is the loss suffered due to separation from a life you loved, the camaraderie, esprit de corps, shared purpose and service above self. I teetered on the brink of disaster when I lost that. I was blind to the adversity of transition from a military to a civilian life. It took all the resilience I had to make it through, and I made it. The best part of that whole experience was that selling humbled me. It shaped me into a better version of myself with new skills and an appreciation for business. And it set me on the path to be here with you today. Resilience is your response to adversity that leads to positive outcomes. The definition shown here comes from the American Psychological Association. There is a large body of science on resilience, what it is and how to apply it. Today, we will explore a few topics that can help each of you develop your own unbreakable mind. I leaned on the resilience system I had developed in the military to get through my transition. My ultimate challenge was not to let the circumstances break me. I had to reset and retrain my unbreakable mind and apply it to my new circumstances. Face your challenges, bend, do not break, weather the storm. It's up to you, get in that zone. Resilience integrates behaviors, thought, into a dynamic protective system that can be learned and developed by anyone. It's your reflex action to adversity that you develop and activate for yourself. Resilience is learned. You learn it through experience, through training, through self-care, often a combination of all those. And it takes determination and deliberate practice on your behalf. Again, my military training programmed me with resilience that could be applied to my transition situation I just had to translate it to something that was unfamiliar, new, and uncomfortable. That became the challenge. Today, as a result of getting through that and other circumstances, I hopefully have some wisdom to share and some actionable strategies for you. Looking at the big picture today, as Tom mentioned, we all need more resilience, more than we may have ever in our lives. Our current baseline for adversity can be overwhelming even for the best of us. From the escalating pandemic to things that are facing us across the economy, I think we can all agree we've had it better. So what can we do now? The best thing that you could do is to start with the facts. Accept the facts of your circumstances. This enables you to devote every ounce of energy that you have into what you can control can control, mainly your thoughts, feelings, and your actions. A technique we're going to explore here is called cognitive reappraisal. Psychologists use this term to refer to the practice of replacing negative thoughts with ones that are both positive and true. An application to this is actually coaching yourself, using self-talk in the third person. 
just like you would help a dear friend. This has been studied extensively at the University of Michigan. And it looks like this. RJ, what are the facts that you must deal with here that you can't change? In the circumstances I was in previously, I was out of the army. I was in a new uncomfortable job with a high failure rate. And I put myself there. So what? I had to ask myself, how about focusing on what to do now to get yourself through with this? After accepting facts and then isolating negativity, you can deal constructively with what is happening. Our default point of view in every tough situation is our evolutionary programming, our biases and our fight or flight response. We are in the grip of our negativity bias, which is how we scan the horizon for threats, see things as negative first so that we can react. What once helped us survive, though, now hurts us. One way to hack that programming is using the cognitive reappraisal approach. You must encourage yourself to learn to see the positive. Starting with your first name, encouraging yourself. You can do this. Even though it's hard, how can you view these circumstances positively? Another way to filter out the negative impacts from adversity is using a rule-based approach and asking does this thought, feeling, or reaction help or hurt me? Please go with help only. This isn't easy, but it's absolutely necessary. Negativity bias gives negative events five times the power as positive events on our mental state. This effect, studied and documented at the University of Washington, means that you need to be finding five positive things for every negative thing that you're going through. Your conscious practice effort to change your perspective from negative to positive when under duress, which counters your instinct and is really uncomfortable, makes all the difference. By actively seeking out things like, what can you learn here? Or what can you be grateful for in these circumstances? You're working on your resilience reflex and programming your own unbreakable mind. Acknowledging and compartmentalizing thoughts and feelings that are real but do not help you is supremely important. Deliberately, ca deliberately casting them out as regrets, this is energy that's devoted to the past, feelings that are devoted to the past, or worries, this is energy and feelings devoted to the future, narrows your focus until you ultimately get to the most important thing that you can do right now. Bob Landry, I'm looking at you. You're a shining example of this. Earlier today, this is just something that is so powerful, real, and resonates with what resilience is all about. I had almost debilitating rumination happening during my transition. I would daydream about the past, simmer with pain and of the regret, regret with what I had lost. I would dread the constant day-to-day -day rejection that comes from the sales life, worry about making a sale, getting a new account. This is after having a job where pretty much everybody did what I told them to do. What was the most important thing that I could do in those circumstances? Was focus on what I was supposed to be doing. Put the damn phone to your ear and dial one after the other. Ultimately, we are responsible for our resilience. So own the fighter within you. You must act for your own benefit. Resist defeat in your own mind. An unbreakable mind is proactive and protective. In my circumstances, it helps to use a military analogy. When you go through ranger school, one of the refrains you hear all the time is, so what are you gonna do now, ranger? A way to frame it through the superhero reference would be, what would Captain America do? <laughs> and that would be how I would use to focus my energy and time. Process, tasks that lead to mission accomplishment. Very constructive things. In my situation I was in, it's like, what are the right goals? $500 a day, a thousand letters a week with follow-up? The same applies to you. What would your model superhero do? And ladies and gentlemen, when I think of real estate agents and superheroes, a lot comes to mind. The powers of smiling and laughter are profound on one's mental state. 
and well documented by science. It can help to ask yourself, what is not awesome in your situation? And I'm totally serious here. Even in the toughest situations, finding a way to laugh eases the mental burdens of what you're facing. Going further, tapping into your community, your relationships make an incredibly positive impact on your resilience. As humans, our evolution is strongly tied to inclusiveness and connection with groups of people. Positive engagements with others bring out our best. Who can you connect with? We are all fortunate to have the Tom Ferry community. For me, it was reaching out to former comrades, brothers and sisters in arms, staying connected, them helping me through what I was suffering, taking away some of the pain of not being with them, while also pushing me forward into a new life. As a bonus, many of them made a lot of fun of me, a lot. And they made me laugh at myself and my circumstances. A lot of times when the phone would ring, it wasn't about a sale. It was one of them encouraging me, pushing me forward. With that, as we conclude, remember that your resilience is up to you. You can learn to develop your reflex action to adversity. Using a, a, uh, an approach called cognitive replacement, where you can, like this, RJ, you bend, you break, excuse me, you bend, you bounce, don't break. Your resilience emerges from your deliberate actions that you take to help yourself and can be enhanced by this third person perspective. Be your own first responder, your own superhero that activates your resilience systems of thoughts, feelings, and actions that can carry you through whatever obstacles you are facing. Don't travel with Tom Hanks. Be sure to find ways to smile and laugh always. And tap into your community here at Tom Ferry. Connect with those who want to see you succeed. Let's be resilient together in pursuit of your greatness. And thank you for your time and attention. So RJ, 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 I know you can hear me. Yes. So hold on. I'm seeing, I can't. I can't. I, I'm seeing questions. Uh, my daughter's at West Point right now. Love hearing stories about that. So that was super cool. Somebody asked, could you please redefine the unbreakable mind? Could you just kind of give it to him? They want to write it down. What is, what is, he said, what is the unbreakable mind? So the unbreakable mind is, is developing your own reflex action. I'll go back to, let's go up here. I put it back up if I can get there. And I think we should have these slides available to everybody as a resource. Okay. Yep. Hey, RJ. Okay. RJ, it's really the learned me. response. Hey, RJ, listen to me. Don't look at your, your slides. Yes. Speak from your heart. What's an unbreakable mind. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can take in your life experience, what you've learned, uh, things that maybe have trained you in thinking about, Hey, I'm facing a problem or adversity. Don't focus on the negative, turn to the positive in this situation. What is something here that I can latch onto that can help me get through what I'm experiencing? One of the worst times that I've experienced in the military has to do with mainly physical circumstances. So when you're out in the mud, rain, cold, and you're hating your life, like, where do you start? A lot of times it goes to, okay, I'm breathing, got that going for me, and then you cascade up. So bringing everything into focus on what's going right for you and then building upon that, no matter how small it is, that's what it takes. You have to concentrate on removing anything that's negative in the future around worry, anything that's negative in the past about regret, focusing on what you need to do right now. There you go. So you know when someone sees someone like you and, and there's a lot of been thank you for your service and Artie is amazing and thank you. Um, they look at people like you and sometimes they'll look at me and, and all of our clients get viewed by the public as someone that is just doing it perfect and everything in their life is great and they have no problem, right? Like I know you, right? I know you have life issues. You got fan, like there's family dynamic and yet, and by the way, guys, he's the COO of this company 
right? He's taken on all day-to-day -day operations, and a lot of people are remote in, in California, a lot of people are remote in Texas. He's up in the Pacific Northwest.